Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry with JR. We're both from Bell Lost Souls, and today we have the brand new Codex Ooh. Thousand Suns. Woo! Uh, we're going to be going through this. Uh, mm -hmm. Today we are going to be going through the army list section. Yeah, we're going to be diving into each unit and kind of talking about what they have, what they do, what they bring to the table, yep. and uh, what we think they'll be good at. Uh, yes. Whether we're right or not is for you to decide. So let's dive right in. Let's do it. We're going to start with the uh, <clears throat> army abilities, uh, of which they have two, yep. and they shouldn't be any surprises to any fans of the Chaos Space Marines book, because uh, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, they, they are. Uh, uh, there's one difference. So yes. they have death... Death to the False Emperor, Death to which the false emperor. is on a 6-up, you get extra attacks in the fight phase. If you're fighting Imperium, which it's either Imperium, Chaos, or Eldar right now, so you know. <laughs> uh, the uh, Demonic Ritual for the Thousand Suns is specific to Zinch. So yes. you can roll three dice, and you can you can have a character try and summon in a demon unit, but it has to be Zinch specific. Zinch only, yeah. Uh, that's that's it. Yep. Let's dive into the units. First up, we have Araman. Araman, yeah. Uh, he is now power level 7, mm -hmm. which and is pretty cool. He is 131 points, or 166 points if you give him a disc of Zinch. Which, of course, you will. Absolutely. <laughs> he's cooler that uh, way. <laughs> way cooler. Uh, if, yep. uh, if he's not on the disc, if he's just walking around, he's movement 6. Uh, otherwise, the, the disc... Ups his speed to 12. 12 inches, and he has the fly keyword added. Mm -hmm. And cavalry and demon. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we'll get to all the keywords here in a second. Let's run through his stats real fast. Yeah. He's got weapon and ballistic skills of 2, a strength of the 4, toughness 4, 5 wounds. Uh, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and 3 up save normally. Mm -hmm. So, hasn't really changed too much, but uh, he's also equipped with the Black Staff of Armin, fittingly. Yep. Uh, a, an Inferno bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades. Um, and uh, you the, can only have one of him in your army, shockingly enough. The Disc of Zinch has the same blades it has, and uh, he comes with what he comes with, because he's a yeah. unique special character. Uh, the Inferno Bolt Pistol, still 12 inch range, still Pistol 1. It is Strength 4 and AP minus 2 with 1 damage, so mm -hmm. that doesn't change too much. Uh, Black uh, Staff of Armin's nice. Yeah, in melee. it is. It's uh, plus 2 Strength, so he hits at Strength 6, uh, minus 1 AP, and it does 3 damage. 3 straight damage, which is mm -hmm. always nice. Uh, his frag and crack grenades, we don't need to cover those. Those are pretty straightforward. The blades of Zinch, uh, blades on the disc of Zinch, excuse me, are again a melee attack, strength four, uh, no AP on that one, one damage. Yeah, he... However, mm -hmm. uh, that is used after a model with this mount, uh, makes his close combat attacks. You can make uh, one additional attack using that profile. So He's, he's really not changed too much yeah. from where he is in the index. I think he's just a little cheaper. Yeah. He still has the... Uh, you get to add plus one to any psychic tests he makes. Yep. He has a four up invulnerable save, and uh, he lets his friends uh, reroll ones onto hits. Yeah, that's the uh, Arch Sorcerer of Zinch, uh, Sigil of Correction, Corruption, and the uh, Lord of the Thousand Suns, respectively. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, too, if you do buy the Disc of Zinch, he does cost two extra power level. He does. Uh, keyword <clears throat> points. Oh, psychic powers real fast. He can do three powers, yep. which is nice. He can also attempt to, to deny, deny three, three, which is even uh, nicer. <laughs> and he has access to uh, the new Discipline of Change uh, psychic powers, which we'll cover in a different video. And also the Dark Hereticus right. powers as well, so, which are also in this book, yeah. which are nice. So you can use him to warp time. Yep. Uh, uh, he's got Chaos Zinch, Heretic, Astartes, and Thousand Suns for his faction keywords and, and his other keywords. And also got Character, Infantry, Sorcerer, Psyker, and Araman. If you mount him on the disc, though, he becomes a demon, which lets you do all kinds of shenanigans. Yeah, he gets the Infantry key... That's, uh, he loses the Infantry keyword, and he gains, again, uh, Daemon, Calvary, and Fly keywords. Yep. So. Just a heads up on that. Next up, uh, in terms of HQ choices, we have, we the, have the Demon Prince of Zinch. Who is a radical. He is a strict upgrade uh, to a regular Demon Prince, if you ask me. Uh, the Demon Prince of Zinch is 146 points, or 8 power levels. If you uh, give him wings, he goes it, up to 9 power level, and, and he costs 170 points. Mm -hmm. He has a movement of either 8 or 12, depending on if he's got wings or not. Uh, weapon ballistic skill of two. Basically, the stats are the same as a normal demon prince. Yeah. Strength seven, tough six, uh, eight wounds, four attacks, leadership ten, and a three up save base. Mm -hmm. um, and because he is a demon prince, you can give him a couple of options. You can take a demonic axe, a hellforged sword, or some malefic Malef talons. talons. Yep. Uh, he is a demon of Zinch, so they just sort of roll that all rolled in there, yeah. all of that in there. So he has the four up invulnerable save that any demon of Zinch has. Yep. Uh, or anyone with ephemeral form has. He's a prince of Zinch, which means that his friends, any any either Thousand Suns yep. or Zinch demons, can reroll uh, hit rolls of one. 
And Within six inches. He can attempt to manifest two psychic powers uh, and deny one. one. Uh, yeah. But he gets powers from all three of the psychic disciplines that are available to uh, the Thousand yep. Suns. That is, again, the dis uh, dis discipline of change, uh, Dark Redis... Dark Hereticus Discipline and the Discipline of Zinch. So if you want like a pretty cool like a, a, a pocket knife multi-tool kind of yeah. unit. Swiss Army uh, Knife guy. He is really, yeah, Swiss Army Knife, thank you. That, uh, he is, he's really going to be good for that because he can he can help you get yeah. a variety of powers out. Now, JR, you said you think he's just a straight upgrade compared mm -hmm. to other Demon Prince. Why was that? Uh, so mostly it's because of the, the powers he's got access to. Mm -hmm. um, he, he can do two powers. Uh, which even a, a demon prince of Zinch in the the Chaos Codex yeah. can only do one. Yeah. Um, he knows uh, from a wide variety. So like, and he, I, as far as I can tell, he costs the same. Yeah. Uh, so you get more bang for your buck yeah. if you take a demon prince. Of I, Zinch. I don't disagree with you. I was just asking for yeah, folks yeah, yeah. that might not be familiar with uh, what the yeah. other demon princes do. So yeah, yeah. that's basically it. He's demon prince of Zinch. He's already in the four up. He's can do two powers. Pretty good stuff. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh. Next up is the Exalted Sorcerer, who clocks in at 7 power level. Mm -hmm. uh, also has the option to be on a Disc of Zinch for one extra power level point. And points-wise, he clocks in at... at... 112 or 132 if you mount him yeah. up on the disc. By the way, these are all points except for characters without Warrior attached. Yeah. So the Demon Prince and the Exalted Sorcerer... They will be more him. expensive, but yep. you know. Stat wise, uh, if if he's not on the disc, if he goes, if he's on the disc, he's a twelve inch move. If he's not on the disc, he has a six inch move. Mm -hmm. uh, two ups to hit for both uh, melee and shooting. Uh, strength and toughness four. No surprise there. Uh, five wounds, four attacks. Strength uh, leadership nine, and uh, three up save. Uh, he can take all of the normal things that an exalted sorcerer can take. He can take an infernal bolt, bolt pistol, a plasma pistol, a warp flame pistol, which yep. is pretty cool. Um, that's like a little mini hand flamer, but they're yeah, it's straight uh, three AP minus two. Yeah, which they're is pretty mean. They're pretty brutal against and auto hits. Yeah, uh, there's the force stave power sword as far as melee options go, and he can take frag and crack grenades. And the disc of Zinch, of course, has the blades, which we've talked about. Yep, he um, still has death of <clears throat> false emperor. Uh, he has favor of Zinch, which gives him a five up in bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has the Lord of the Thousand Suns again, rerolling ones to hit for friendly Thousand Suns within six inches of him. Uh, he can do two psychic powers each turn, and he can deny one power each turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has access to the Discipline of Change and the Dark Hereticus Discipline as well. So if you want to make sure that you've got uh, warp time in your army... Yeah. The... Oh, keyword-wise, too, real oh, quick. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Demon Prince of Zinch has Chaos, Zinch, Her uh, Heretic, Stardust, Thousand Sons for his faction keywords, and his keywords are Character, Monster, Demon, and Demon Prince... The Exalted Sorcerer has Chaos, Zinch, Heretic Astartes, and Thousand Sons, which most of these guys are going to have. Yep. Uh, and is a character, infantry, sorcerer, psyker, and exalted sorcerer as far as his personal keywords. Yep. And if you take the wings on uh, either one of the, on uh, the Demon Prince of Zinch, he can fly. If you take the disc on the Exalted Sorcerer, he also loses the infantry keyword, gains Demon, Cavalry, and fly. So, yep. again, more Demon shenanigans. Uh, and then next up, we have the normal sorcerer, not exalted. Yep. Uh, who is uh, six power level or ninety-five points? You can't put him on a disc, uh, so you know he's just going to be on the ground. He's the cheaper guy. Pretty though. much. Um, he has pretty much all the exact same war gear options as the uh, exalted sorcerer. The biggest difference is that they can um, they don't have that like Lord of of Zinch ability. Or yeah, Lord they, of the Thousand Suns. Right, game. they have the favorite of Zinch instead, uh, <clears throat> which is still a five-up involved, mm -hmm. but no, no rerolls to hit. Yep. Uh, Stat-wise, too, they're slightly different. They uh, are. They... The only six power level. It's uh, movement six, weapon skill, ballistic skill three. Now, mm -hmm. strength toughness four, so that hasn't changed. Four wounds, so you lose a wound versus the exalted sorcerer. Only three attacks, leadership nine, and a three-up save. But you're not really taking these guys for their uh, close combat prowess, you're taking them because the sorcerers can manifest two psychic powers and can attempt to deny one. And like the exalted sorcerer, they have access to the discipline of change and the dark hereticus discipline. Yep. Uh, we'll get to those. They're they're really cool. Uh, the Thousand Suns have some pretty brutal powers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and again, you, keywords are pretty much the same. Uh, we'll keep going You here. can, however, drop a sorcerer into Terminator yeah, armor, which bumps him up to eight power level and makes him cost 120 points. Yep. He gains an extra wound. Mm -hmm. uh, he loses his uh, point of movement, so he's, he's only movement five. Uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness are all the same again. 
He's um, in Terminator, so it's a two-up save. Yep. Uh, Leadership and, nine, still three attacks. And you can give him an Inferno Combi Bolter. Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty pretty good. And you can also give him uh, either a Force Stave or a... Uh, you can swap out the Combi Bolter for a Force Stave and a Power Sword. Mm -hmm. um, he can also be accompanied by a Familiar, uh, which lets you get an extra plus one on any tests in the Psychic Phase. It's pretty, pretty nice. Um, but it's in each of your Psychic Phases, so if you're attempting to deny the Witch... Uh, it's only in it's your only, Phase. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, he's in Terminator Armor, so he can teleport onto the battlefield wherever and he wants. And he's got the five up in roll, yeah. too. Yep. And he still does two powers a turn and to deny one. We mentioned that already. Uh, the, the only difference in, in keywords keyword, is that he's a Terminator. Not he just still a... has character, infantry, psyker, and sorcerer. Yep. So. Uh, and then, of course, Chaos Scene. Sh yeah, Thousand Suns, correct. Yes. Yep. Uh, now we get to the, the, the good stuff. So troops, yeah. right out of the gate, uh, Rupert Marines are troops now. They were yeah. elites in the uh, Chaos Marines Codex. But, but now... you're playing Thousand Suns, so yeah. naturally they're going to be troops. Yep. Um, they are power level 7 for a starter uh, unit of 5. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take up to 5 additional models uh, at uh, for power level 7 plus, so it would be 14 for 10 models, or 10 more models uh, for a 14 plus of 21. Or 15 for plus 20. So that would put you at 27 points mm -hmm. for uh, 20 <clears throat> models total. Which is pretty good. And yep. uh, each of those models, if you're playing with match play points, is 18 points uh, naked. Um, and you can give them Inferno Bolt Pistols, Inferno Bolt Guns. You can give them Plasma Pistols. Uh, not all of them. Not all of them, but that's yeah. what their war gear options are. Uh, one of them can take a... Uh, Soul Reaper Cannon, if you've got ten or more, yep. uh, you can give them uh, your, your like, Sergeant, which is an Aspiring Sorcerer. Yep, you can yep. give them a Warp Flame Pistol. Uh, you can take a Warp Flamer instead of your uh, uh, bolt, bolt Guns. Mm -hmm. So um, You can do the whole uh, uh, Warp Flame Squad, yeah. which is kind of cool. It, it, it is, and yep. they're, they're mean. Uh, yeah. Either the Inferno Bolt Gun or the, the Flamer are both Strength 4, AP-2. Stat-wise, it's interesting. The Rubric, Rubric Marines are still movement 5, mm -hmm. and the Aspiring Sorcerer is actually movement 6. Uh, across the board, uh, they're pretty much the same. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, skills 3+, plus. strength up is 4, 1 wound each. Uh, the Rubric Marines only have 1 attack base. The Aspiring Sorcerer, though, has 2. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sorcerer has a leadership <laughs> 8 versus a 7 on the, on the Marines, and they both, you know, the whole squad has a 3-up save. Uh, they do, however, have the favorite of Zinch ability, which gives them a 5-up involve, which <clears throat> and, is pretty cool. And uh, they have All is Dust, yes. which lets you add 1 to saving throws if the attack has a damage characteristic of 1. So if someone's shooting you with small arms fire, you're effectively a 2-up. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In addition, uh, the minus 1 modifier for uh, to hit rolls for moving and shooting a heavy weapon does not apply to Rubric Marines. Yeah. Uh, heavy weapons, again, you can take in the squad would be the Soul Reaper Cannon. Um, which is a four shot, 24 inch range, strength five, AP minus three, one damage shot. Pretty mean. Yeah, and uh, you'll be constantly moving and yeah. shooting that, so you'll have an effective threat range of 29 inches with that weapon. It's pretty good. Uh, you can also give them an icon of flame, which uh, lets you uh, basically roll a uh, D6 for every unit that has a an icon of flame on it. If you get a six up, uh, you can inflict one mortal wound on the closest enemy unit uh, within, within 12, 12 inches. inches of whichever model is carrying the icon of flame. Yeah, remember it's whichever model, not the unit. Yeah, so. that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the the aspiring sorcerer, by the way, <laughs> can attempt to manifest one psychic power and attempt to deny one as well, because of course there's each. Yeah. And he has access to the discipline of change. Uh, and that's the only one. Yep. Uh, however. Uh, and, and when he uses Smite, he inflicts a one mortal wound instead of D3 or D3 mortal wounds instead of D6 if the test is more than 10. Yep. So, pretty interesting little uh, little tidbit there. He's got Smite, but it's a watered-down version of Smite, essentially. It is. That means that you won't be able to, like, spam out Smites with just taking Rupert Marines. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, yeah. I mean, you will, but it'll yeah. be... <laughs> it'll be a know, little watered-down. It won't be a swinging. Yeah. Uh, there's Next up... Zangors? Zangors. Yeah, these We're guys excited are about these guys, awesome. Yeah. Uh, they actually have quite a few attacks if you do it right, which we'll get to here in a minute. But they're power level 4 base for 10 models. Mm -hmm. That's 1 Twist Bray and 9 Zangors. You can add 10 more to the unit for only 3 power level points. Or bad. you can add 20 to the unit 
for six power level points. Which gives you a total of 30 guys 30 models for, for six power for, level. For uh, 10 power level. Oh, total. 10 power level. Yeah. And each of those uh, will cost you seven points in match play terms. Yep. Which is totally nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's uh, that's dirt cheap. Yeah. Each model comes standard with, with Zangor blades, and you can swap those out. Uh, you can replace your Zangor blades with an auto pistol and chain sword. Uh, as well, one Zangor can take a Brayhorn, and the Brayhorn adds one advance, one to their advance and charge rolls uh, for the unit if they mm -hmm. have a Brayhorn. Uh, so Zangors are a weapon, and weapon skill three, ballistic skill four. Their strength and toughness four. They have a wound. Uh, one attack. One attack, unless you're the the special guy, then yep. you get two. Uh, leadership six or seven, uh, if if you're the special guy. The Bray, uh, Twist Bray has a has a plus one to leadership, mm -hmm. seven versus a six base. They will only have a six-up save, but they do come with a five-up end one, which is nice. Yep. And they are movement six. These guys are basically like scouts. Yeah. Um, lightly armored, move fast, uh, or relatively fast compared to the Rubik Marines for only movement five. Absolutely. Or the Terminators, which are moving slower than that. <laughs> um, they can get a lot of attacks again with the Zangor Blades each time the bear fights. By the way, they are the Zangor Blades are uh, melee weapons, obviously. They are strength user, so they're strength four attacks, mm -hmm. minus one AP, mm -hmm. and one damage. Each time the bear fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon. Uh, and just like a chain sword, except the chain sword doesn't have the, the minus AP. one AP. So, so, yeah, if you take a, a, a choppy squad, let's call them, <laughs> yeah. uh, then uh, each guy is doing two attacks, just standard. Mm -hmm. um, Brayhorn gives them an advance to the charge, uh, which is nice. Have a five of involved so they can stick around longer than they have any right to. And uh, if they're going up against characters, which is kind of one of the things I guess that you want them to do, they can reroll all uh, failed hit rolls in yep. the in the fight phase. So that's thanks to an ability called Relic Hunters, mm -hmm. which you might be familiar with. <clears throat> so, yeah, they're they and then if you combo that with uh, psychic powers, which we go over at a later date. But um, yeah, you can actually get these guys across the table pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, get on a fight twice. You can, some, you can you can you can buff their strength. You can yeah. you like uh, a big part of considering a thousand suns army is uh, figuring out like what the psychic powers you're gonna bring are gonna yeah. do to the the basic tools. These are like the these two units in particular are your bread and butter. Yeah. Uh, the Rubric Marines are more of your elite, and the Zangors again. Shrink toughness four is no joke. They yeah. they have t-shirts for armor saves, but they have a five up involved, so it kind of kind of works out for them. And you can just take them in a big pack of dudes. I mean, they are a uh, I think just an upgrade all around to cultists. Uh, <laughs> oh, real quick too, they do not have the Damon keyword. Uh, yeah, a lot they of don't. People might be surprised at that. They have chaos, zinch, heretic, astartes, thousand suns for their faction and infantry and zangor. Right. They are their own thing. They are not demons and they are not normal infantry. Well, they are infantry, but. Not yeah, they're not they're not uh, <laughs> demon infantry or, yeah. or rubric marines or whatever. Uh, next, but up, chaos cultists. Yeah, next up we have chaos cultists who are basically the same. Uh, I don't know if there's anything special about them in the Thousand Suns army list. Uh, it doesn't look like there is. Nope, still doing <clears> this <throat> thing with the uh, heavy stubber or flamer for every ten models. Mm -hmm. Or you can swap out their weapons for uh, uh, brutal assault yep. close combat weapons and make them hit more. They're pretty uh, dirt cheap still. They they're three power level for ten guys, or <laughs> or like twelve power level for for forty guys. Yeah, which uh, I, that's one of the things they have, I guess, is they can take a mass of yeah, dudes. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> they're four points a piece. Uh, if if you want to put bodies on the on the table, uh, these guys are the way to go. They're, they're yeah. chaos cultists. They're chaos you know cultists. them. You know them. You know you know you love them. You love shooting them. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna skip through those. Uh, also Horrors. a troop. Are horrors mm -hmm. right, and again, these come in the three different flavors. You got your pink horrors, your blue horrors, and of course your brimstone horrors. Right. Um, a, a basic unit of, of horrors starts. It has ten pink horrors, blue, or pairs of brimstone horrors in any combination. They are power level five to start with. Uh, it can include uh, up to ten additional horrors at plus five power level, or twenty additional horrors at plus ten power level. Uh, pink horrors are armed with. Uh, Coruscant flames. flames. Thank you. Blue horrors and brimstone horrors simply scrabble at anyone who comes too close. Uh, now, as far as points go, pink horrors are seven, blue horrors are five, and brimstone horrors are three. Um, they uh, so they have quite a few special rules. <laughs> they, they do. They do. Uh, but they only have uh, one weapon that is not uh, their their fists. Uh, 
Yeah. So they have an assault two. That's the core skating flames from the pink flame floors. Thing. It's an 18 inch range assault two shot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's strength user, so it's strength three for the pink horrors. Uh, no AP and one damage. If they are in close combat, they use the default close combat attacks, which means they're striking at strength uh, three two for pink horrors. Or, yeah, two, two for, for blue, blue or, or one. one. Yeah, they're pretty. Uh, they definitely go down quite a bit. Absolutely. Uh, Stat wise, let's just go through that real fast. Yep. Uh, movement six across the board. Pink horrors are weapon skill BS four, so it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Hit on four plus. Uh, strength and toughness threes. Uh, one wound, one attack. Seven leadership, six save. Blue horrors lose a point of weapon skill, so they hit on five ups. Uh, lose a point of strength, so they're strength two. Still tough three, and uh, one wound, one, one attack each. Leadership seven, six up. Uh, Brimstone horrors are still weapon skill five. They're only strength one though, so yeah. Uh, Go fish the, fish out those sixes. Yeah. Uh, they are toughness three. They Which is kind of nice. They stay at toughness three. They have one wound and two attacks. This is technically two on a model, on a base. Yeah, on a so base. So it's a pair so, of them. But yeah. yeah, two attacks, which is funny. Other than that, ability-wise, they have quite a few abilities. They do have yes. the uh, demonic ritual. So right. they can, they can summon other demons <clears throat> in. <laughs> yep. Uh, they uh, they have uh, the ephemeral demons yeah. ability, which gives pink horrors a four up invulnerable save. Uh, blue horror is a five up, and brimstone horror is a six up invulnerable save. Which otherwise they they have a t-shirt. So they all have a six up save just as is. <clears throat> uh, iridescent horror. When you set them up as a unit for the first time, you may select a single pink horror in that unit. That model has attacks an attack characteristic of two instead of one. So it's kind of like the leader. Right. Yeah. Um, they have magic made manifest, which it, which lets them attempt to. Uh, manifest one psychic power in each psychic phase and attempt to deny one psychic power in yeah. each psychic phase. However, they only get a D6 to this. Yep. Um, so uh, they will never suffer perils of the warp, but also odds are real good, even if you're just like smiting with them, uh, that they won't uh, do it. Yeah, they have a, they have, yeah, not the best odds. No. Uh, Instrument of Chaos, if you have one in the unit, uh, the unit includes any instruments, adds one again to their advance and charge rolls, which mm -hmm. is kind of nice. And then, of course, there's the split. split. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, you want to go over this one? <laughs> yes. So each time a, yeah. pl a pink horror dies, you can add up to two blue horrors. Uh, each time a blue horror dies, you can add one pair of brimstone horrors. Yeah. Uh, you have to, like, set them up within an inch of their unit. Uh, horrors, cannot be within one inch of an enemy unit either. And they have to be killed. Horrors that run away because of morale don't uh, turn into blue or brimstone yeah. horrors. So if you have a pink horror and they lose a dude to leadership check for whatever reason, he does not spawn more horrors. But all of this is basically immaterial because in matched play, uh, you have to pay reinforcement points for each and every blue or brimstone horror that you add to yeah. a unit of horrors. So, <coughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, you still pay for them in match play. That's the yeah, key thing. That that is the most important part. You can't take an icon. So when you roll a one, when you're taking a morale test for the unit, uh, no models flee, and D6 slain pink horrors are instead added to the unit. Right. Yeah. Which is which is <coughs> nice. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if you have 20 or more pink horrors, you have Assault 3 on your guns. Uh, these guys are st stupid cheap. Uh, they're a, another good, like, mob unit. They oh, aren't yeah. nearly as good <coughs> as they used to be, though. Next up, we have the Zangor Shaman, who's going to be our first elite of the day. Yeah! This is a single model unit that rides on top of a Disc of Zinch. It's a Zangor Shaman. Yep. Uh, he's got a pretty good stat line, which we'll cover real fast. Yeah, he's, uh, well, first he's 5 power level, or... Yeah. Uh, uh, 82 points uh, if, if you want to pick him up, but he's got 12 inch move because of the disc. Yeah. Weapon and ballistic skill of 3, strength and toughness of 4. 4 wounds, 3 attacks, uh, leadership 8, and a leader, uh, save of 6 up, but he does have a 5 up involved mm -hmm. naturally because he's a, a, a Zangor. He's got the aura of the Dark of glor dark Glory. Uh, and he hits pretty hard in close combat. He has a 4 stave, uh, which means that he, he's uh, hitting at plus 2 strength. Yep, so gives him strength, strength six, six. Uh, AP minus one, and it does a D three damage. That's pretty uh, good. So he uh, he, along with the other Zangors, will make mincemeat out of stuff. Especially since uh, he has an ability that called Bestial Prophet, which lets the Zangors get plus one to hit. Yeah. So uh, all of a sudden, that unit of Zangors is hitting on twos, which is pretty good. With if you're attacking <laughs> characters, don't forget you're also getting reroll ones, which mm -hmm. is pretty pretty mean. On top of all of that fun stuff. And he also uh, has a Sorceress Elixir, uh, which you can use when you fail a Psychic Test for the first time. Uh, 
You uh, can re-roll. Yeah, you re-roll it. But you can only do that once per battle. Yeah. So he drinks the potion and redoes the psychic test. He's a nice little mix of a uh, sorcerer. He's like a cheaper version of a sorcerer and a Zangor, which makes yeah, sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he knows <coughs> he can manifest one power, deny one power, and uh, knows one power in addition to smite. Yep. Um, he has the... Uh, uh, Discipline of change is his, uh, his go-to as well. Yep, and he, it, like everyone on a disc, is a character... Well, not everyone on a disc, but he has character, cavalry, demon, demon Zangor, Zangor, fly, psychic, and shaman keywords. And his faction keywords, of course, chaos, zinch, heretic, astartes, and thousand suns. Yep. Next up, for our next elite choice, we're going to be looking at the flamers. Whee! These are a... Elite, again, power level 4 starting out, and points-wise, they clock in at 28 points a pop, mm -hmm. uh, again, before any war gear options. Uh, they are, uh, they, they, they come in units of 3, you yep. can upgrade them to 6 or 9 for an additional 4 or 8 power level. Yep, uh, one of those models will be the Pyrocaster, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Stat-wise, pretty good. Uh, movement 12, weapon skill only, weapon skill 5, BS 3+, plus. Uh, strength and toughness 4, 2 wounds each. The uh, base flamers have two attacks. The pyrocaster is three. Lead they're both leadership seven, and they have a six-up save. Although they are demons, uh, so they have uh, the five, the five up, up invulnerable. Which is save. actually because they're zinch demons, they have a four up invulnerable. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is the ephemeral demons again. Yes, and so. that's that's rolled right into the unit entry. And they also have the demons uh, demonic ritual also. And they have infantry fly and flamers, so they can never get bogged down in close combat. Yep. Uh, they will always be able to shoot next with their flamers which by the way oh, yeah. are pretty mean the flipping flames uh, range 12 pistol d6 yep. which is interesting so strength user so strength four uh minus one ap one damage but it's an auto hit weapon yeah and then being uh then being pistols means that even if you are in combat you can, can still, still flame shoot guys yeah um next up we have the scarab occult terminators again this is an elite choice these are power level 10 to start with 11 to start with oh uh, sorry 11 to start with it has a uh one scarab a, a occult sorcerer and four occult terminators you can have five more occult terminators for another 11 point mm -hmm. power level points uh, uh, and points points for match play for points points uh you will be paying uh, 33 points a guy naked uh you will be paying more than that by the time you're done outfitting them yep uh they have a lot of a lot of war gear options uh, they, Not as many as like uh, as, as like the, the death the guard, death guard <laughs> or or whatever, but but we'll go through those right uh, now. Yeah, so you can take uh, they they come with an inferno uh, combi vulture and a power sword base. Uh -huh. The sorcerer comes with an inferno combi vulture and a force stave. Right, which is pretty good. Their options wise though, uh, uh, one the sorcerer can replace his uh, combi his weapons with a, a combi vulture and power sword. Options. Mm -hmm. You swap out the, the four staff. No, no, that. no. You swap out your bolter for uh, the sword. Yeah, sorry, yes. Yeah. So, so you, yeah. can, you can have two close combat weapons yes. with your sorcerer if you want. Yeah. Uh, your uh, One of your guys can swap out the combi bolter for a heavy warp flamer or a soul reaper cannon. If you have ten models, you can do a second model that can do mm -hmm. that. Yep. Uh, one scare assault terminator can also take a hellfire missile rack. If you have ten models, you can take a second. So, if you have a full unit of ten, you can take two heavy warp flamers or Soul Reaper, any combination of those, and, and also two Hellfire Missile Racks. So let's let's talk about those weapons real quick. Yeah. So the Warp Flamer is a, uh, it's a, flame a, a heavy flamer. Yep, it's a 8-inch range, a heavy D6, strength 5, AP minus 1, 1 damage, and because it's a flamer, it auto-hits. Mm -hmm. So who cares if you take a minus 1 for moving and firing? Right. But you don't. Uh, the that. guys with the Hellfire Missile Rack do, because they're heavy too, uh, but they're strength 8, AP 2, and do uh, D3 damage. So a nice little bit of... Uh, yeah. Crack missile, equipment. crack missile. Kind but of they don't even power. care about moving and firing because they have the all dust, all yeah, dust ability, which we'll say. get to. <laughs> uh, so that's the two heavy weapon options. Uh, oh, uh, and there's... then the Soul Reaper can is the third one. That's a twenty-four inch range, heavy four uh, shot. It is a strength five, AP minus three, and does one damage as well. Mm -hmm. And then of course the combi bolters are the a bolter that does minus yeah. two uh, damage. So yeah. always good stuff. Um, Abilities. So they have All is Dust, as you were saying. Yep. All is Dust. Uh, they have Death of the False Emperor, which we've covered both of those already. Mm -hmm. uh, Terminator Armor. Again, all these guys have a 5-up Invuln save. And, Two wounds is pretty good. And uh, they can do... Uh, they can Teleport. manifest one and deny one, and they know uh, powers from the Discipline of Change. Yes, and they can also Teleport Strike in uh, if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, they have yeah. the same Watered Down Smite as well as mm -hmm. the other, like the Rupert Marine Sorcerer. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, that's that's the occult terminators. Another pretty pretty cool, pretty mean unit. Uh, the next elite choice is the Hellbrute, clocking yep. in at seven power level and points wise. Uh, points wise, he costs the uh, seventy two points. Yes. Um, <clears throat> This guy is pretty cool. He comes. Yeah, that's with before a... weapons, by the yes, way. Is, you do have to pay naked. for the weapons. <laughs> yes, uh, I don't think you have to pay for his hell brute fist, but you do no, have to pay for his multi melt it. Oh, you do. You pay the hell. Oh. The hell. Just I remember this one off the top of my head. It was forty points for a single one or fifty Jeez. points for a pair. So oh, well, you're paying quite a few points for the hell brute. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, uh, it's stat wise still cool. Uh, leadership eight. Or, leadership. Uh, movement eight. <laughs> weapon skill, ballistic skill three up. Uh, strength 6, tough 7, 8 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3-up save. So yep. it's a Dreadnought. Yep. Uh, he can take uh, basically uh, all of the Dreadnought favorites, Combi Bolters, he Heavy Flamers. Uh, he can take a Hellbrute Plasma Cannon, yeah. which is you know a strength 8, AP3, 2 damage weapon. Um, it, Missile Launcher, Multi Milta, the Reaper Auto Cannon option, yep. Twin Heavy Bolter option, Twin Lay Laz Cannon, the, the Hellbrute Fist, which you've mentioned the points-wise. The uh, Hellbrute Hammer. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, sounds like a movie. Right? <laughs> Hellbrute Hammer. Uh, Power Scourge as well. So all those options you've seen before uh, for a Hellbrute. Um, it is crazed. Yeah. So at the end of any phase in which the model loses any wounds on a D6, you roll a D6 on a 6, uh, the model immediately makes a shooting attack if it was your shooting phase. Uh, <clears throat> or he piles in fights as yep. though it were your fight phase. Uh, if there's no one nearby, nothing happens. Yep. And it is a battering onslaught as well, which adds one to this model's attacks characteristics if it is equipped with two melee weapons. Yep. Uh, and it blows up. It has and it blows up. And this it has all the normal Thousand Suns keywords and is a vehicle and a hell route. Yep. Uh, next up, we have the Zangor Enlightened, our first fast attack troops. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Moving right along here. <clears throat> Power level three base. It's going to have three bottles in the unit. Uh, one's an Aviarch and then two Enlightened. Uh, if you remember that kit, it's the guys on the uh, Disc of Zinch with the bows. Yeah. Uh, you can include three more for power level uh, plus two or up to six Enlightened for power level plus four. Each model is armed with the with a Divining steep Spear. And they ride the disc of each. With, of course, all of the models of the disc of each have the uh, attacks. The, the, with blades the blades of the disc of each. Yep. They are uh, fifteen points a model. Um, yep. If you if you just want to grab them for match play, yep. all models in the unit can replace the divining spear with a chain sword, an auto pistol, or a fate caster great bow. I think that's going to be your go-to option, by yeah, the way. The, we haven't the, really talked the, too many about options we go with, but the yeah. Great Bow seems like the way to go. Let's So let's uh, run through their stats and then talk yeah. about why why the Great Bow is the way to go. I agree with you, but yeah. But yeah. They are movement 12 because they're on the discs, mm -hmm. so they also have Calvary, Damon, Zangor, Fly, and Enlighten because of the, the disc. Uh, weapon skill, BS3, so 3 plus sure. is great. Strength tough is 4, so just like uh, Rubric Marine. They have 2 wounds each. 2 attacks each, except for the Aviarch, who has 3. Mm -hmm. uh, leadership 7 base, except for the Aviarch, who is 8. And a 6 up t-shirt save. Except they are Zangor, so they have a 5 up and vulnerable yep. save, which is really what you're going to be making. Yep. Uh, but, okay, so the Fate Caster Great Bow. Yeah, uh, you can take, again, Auto Pistol, Chain Sword. That's cool. The Divine Spear is not bad. It's plus 1 strength. Minus one AP on your attacks and it's one damage. Uh, yeah. It's a melee thing. That's cool. The damage from this weapon is increased to two on a turn when they charge. So if, if you, you want to fly them, around and charge. Yeah, if you, if you want to make them like some Lancers, great. But, but the Fate Caster Great Pro is uh, where it's at. It's a 24 inch range, range assault two, strength five, AP minus one shot, one damage. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, why they're so good, uh, each guy's cranking out two shots, but they have Guided by Fate. Each time you make a hit roll of six plus, for a model in this unit, except for the disc, disc splage, uh, do not make a wound roll for that attack. It uh, it's automatically successful. Oof. Uh, saving throws may be attempted against these attacks as normal. normal. But just from a pure, pure like hit and not get hit standpoint, I think flying around on the disc with the bow, yeah, uh, you're getting two shots per guy, and yeah. there's no risk of getting hit back. Yeah. And if you roll a six to hit, boom. You're you're auto wounding. Yeah. Uh, Again, the, the spear's not bad on the charge, but I just feel like this is a great harassment unit. Oh, I, I agree. I, I feel like this is kind of the fast attack unit that uh, we've been wanting to see. Uh, For Zinch, yeah. We've, well, we've talked about like how fast attack units in 8th edition aren't like they aren't the best. They, they don't do what they need to do. Right. And, and these guys feel like they, they really can because uh, they have yeah. a, a decently strong and, and decently ranged weapon. Because a lot of times fast attack units will be real quick. 
but they'll be so short range that like you get in there, you do one thing, and then you get wiped out on the counter charge. Yeah, the twenty four inch range means that you can really <clears throat> stay back and shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if they only had a twelve inch range, that means they're moving up really quickly to get in range, firing. And then the counter charge, like Jared just said. Yeah. If the, with that 24 inch range, it gives you some play with the board on the distances. You're moving 12, so you have a threat range of 36 inches. Which, like, that lets you take yeah. advantage of some surprise. Like, you can you can get pull off some surprising, uh, yeah, outflanks or or whatever. Yeah. And if you do get charged because you have fly, you can fall back and still shoot. Yep. Which again, uh, makes these guys pr pretty deadly. Uh, and and their their weapons are strength five. Uh, yeah. Uh, which. If is, you go if you go with these spears yeah. spears you're also strength five sure the the bows again it's that it's that fact that you're not getting hit back yeah um, so uh, you're you're staying free to harass people yeah. more and like if they come after you they'll they'll have to try to kill these guys yeah they'll have to put commit you if you want to take these guys out you're actually gonna have to commit with the five up involved saying and, and two, two wounds. wounds each yeah. Yeah, you can't just like throw a unit of guys and expect to wipe them out. You're like you're gonna have to actually dedicate a couple of things to taking them down, catching them in combat, or, or shooting them. So yeah, I, I, I think that's a like the hidden gem. I, I really the like these attack. guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, moving on from there. Uh, four up. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> four up screamers. Uh, <laughs> yes. they're power level four. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screamers are the next fast attack. Uh, points wise, they are uh, thirty one points each. Yep. Um, uh, and that's naked. Uh, they are yeah. four power level. They contains three screamers for that. You can have three more screamers for another plus four power level, or six additional for power level plus eight. Uh, and they all come with the lamprey bites. These are the flying manta ray kind yep. of guys. Yep. Uh, uh, strength four, set wise, they move sixteen, which yeah, is pretty so impressive. <laughs> they're fast. They have a four up uh, weapon skills. No BS because they don't shoot. Right. Uh, strength toughness four, two wounds each, three attacks, uh, leadership seven, and strength six. Now, uh, real fast, these are not the same screamers that used to rain terror no. upon the tabletop. They but are not. they're not bad. They're just not. The, they're not the same from they're that not, level. <laughs> yeah, they're not that good. Uh, they do have a four up invulnerable save, which is nice. Yeah. Um, the and... slashing attack is back. Demonic control is also in there, but slashing attack. If the unit moves over an enemy unit during its movement phase. Uh, if and it didn't fall back, you can choose one of those enemy units and roll a d6 uh, for each screamer in the unit. Any rolls of six inflict a mortal wound on the on the unit. So so again, it's, it's okay, but like the, the potential for that is is way watered six down. One based on how many screamers you take. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's the the these are not the same Death Star screamers that we no. remember from back in the day. But they're they're uh, they're not bad. They're just. Well, they, they, I'd rather they, take Zangor and Lightning. Yeah, they they, <laughs> they they suffer the same problem we were just talking about. Like they'll definitely get in there and they'll hit something and yeah. strength six, AP three, and two damage. It's no joke. Like yeah. that's, that they're gonna you know feel it. Yeah, but three attacks. Yeah, you only have three of them, uh, and they're gonna get hit back. Yeah, and you're I mean, gonna you're you, gonna start losing that effectiveness. You real can take quick. six more, but it's just they don't have the same durability they used to. Mm -hmm. Even with the four up save is is. It's good. Don't get it's me wrong. It's good. Yeah, and two wounds. Two nothing wounds. to sneeze at. But yeah, they hit hard. I just uh, I would rather take Zangor and Lightning personally. Yeah, I feel like you'll be able to use them more often. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I still I'm, I'm I'm conflicted because again they're they're on paper the lamprey bite seems really good. It does. Two it, plus. I mean they're hitting at strength six. AP minus three. AP three, which is great. Yeah. But, two damage. But you got to remember too with strength six that means you're not wounding toughness four things on a. Two up, you're winning them still on a three up. Right. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I I think the enlightened are gonna be like uh, the the thing that people are like, oh man, these guys are fun. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Chaos uh, spawn. <clears throat> spawn. You know them. You love them. Uh, yeah. They were they were made by uh, uh, Todd. Todd. Todd yeah. Mc, McFarlane. What's yeah, that guy. Yeah. That guy. Spawn jokes. Yeah. Hey. Chaos spawn are power level two. It's for one model. You can add more to the unit. Real quick though. Uh, Chaos Spawn are not known for being awesome. They are different in this book. They are. Uh, not stat block wise, no, but they potential are. wise later on, which we'll cover when we, in another time when we go over the strategy. Yes, and stuff. Uh, they are. They are exactly the same Spawn uh, as, that you know and love or loathe. Yeah. But, love to loathe. <laughs> but uh, the forces of Zinch have a much better way of uh, leveraging them. Uh, they still have that crazy chart. The one to three chart for razor claws, uh, grasping pseudopods, and toxic hemorrhage. 
Zinch has a way to manipulate that chart to make them yeah. useful. So, so basically, you you can, you like can pick. pick which one you want, and <laughs> yeah, you can you can reroll their the number of attacks they get in close combat. They're still fragile as all get out because they're not uh, they're not demons. So uh, yeah, that's the weird thing too. They don't have an invulnerable save, uh, so they they fall apart as soon as you try to shoot them. Now they are tough five though, so it takes <clears throat> better than just small arms fire because yeah. they do have four wounds each. But if you shoot them with anything that's serious, they're they're sad and then they're dead. Yeah, e like even a squad of guardsmen can can reliably like whittle them down by the time they they get. There, We've seen you know? it. We've played it. We've done that. So. Um, Oh, okay, uh, so that's now, it for the fast attack. Now we get into, we get into the that. heavy choices. Yeah. And we get to see uh, something we're both pretty excited about, <clears throat> the Mutilith Vortex Beast. <laughs> yeah, this is a cool model. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited for any reason to have this thing on the board. Personally. Absolutely. These guys are awesome. Yeah. They're, they're uh, eight power level yep. um, or uh, 150 points. Base before weapons. Right. <clears throat> uh, they have a variable movement and a variable number of attacks based on the, how many wounds they have. So we'll get back to that. <clears throat> they are weapon skill BS four, mm -hmm. strength seven, toughness seven. Uh, <clears throat> have a fourteen. They have fourteen wounds. <laughs> fourteen wounds. Uh -huh. uh, uh, leadership seven, uh, four up save. Uh, based on the number of wounds they have, top tier their movement eight with four attacks. They have a vortex power of two plus, which we'll get to that in yeah. a minute. It's yeah. Uh, at, uh, at at seven second wounds, command. yeah, four, four to seven wounds. They have a, a movement of six, three attacks, and a three plus on the vortex table. Uh -huh. And then if they have one to three wounds left, they have a four up, a four plus movement, four inch movement, uh, two attacks, and a four plus on the vortex table. Yeah. So and they have vortex a, power. They have my favorite weapon in the game, uh, a <laughs> betentacled maw, betentacled. and it's just for the name. Uh -huh. Yeah. Not because it's it's just the name. Yes, it does mean though that uh, every every time they attack with it, they make it's one of those you make three attacks instead of one. Yeah, so you yeah. can have like twelve attacks with yeah, the guy if you get in there with the pretty mom. cool. They're strength user as well, mm -hmm. so seven. strength seven across all the time. There's that the strength on their attacks never drops, which I do like. Yeah, uh, it's AP minus one uh, and one damage. Yeah. Uh, or with a potential maul. There's the enormous claws, which are you know uh, strength seven, AP minus two, and two damage, but you get a third of the attack, so I feel yeah. like you almost always want to go with the. Uh, yeah, I think the, the, certainly depending on what you're fighting back or what you're fighting with. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like the botanical maul is probably going to be the way, it's just because it stays at strength seven the whole time. Yeah. And you just get more attacks, but anyway, uh, or of dark glory, so they have a five up. They right. are demons. Uh, no, they're sorry. They're not demons. They're not That's demons, what I was so going to say. They, they're but monsters. They, they do have a five up in vulnerable yeah. save, which is which is nice. Yep, they have uh, mutant regeneration. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the start of each of your turns, you regain one wound for free. And then, and they then have... their warp vortex. Would you like to <laughs> show sure. this one? So basically, at the start of each of your shooting phases, uh, you can have your mutilith vortex beast try and use a single mutilith vortex power. Uh, which is in a table that you can you can see in their unit entry, and basically uh, you can either pick one or you can randomly do it. Uh, if you randomly do it, you can try and do a second random power as well. Um, so basically, uh, anytime it tries to use one of its powers, uh, so so basically you can get one power that you pick or two powers at, at random. random. Yep. Uh, Anytime you try and use a power, roll a d6. Uh, if the roll is equal to or greater than the power needed to make it happen, uh, you resolve the power effects. Uh, so at, on a uh, like top tier healthy one, uh, you have like a, a two plus to manifest yeah. your power, or a three plus or a four plus. Um, so it's never worse than a 50-50 chance. Um, yeah. But it's just kind of cool because you ran. You can randomly pick. Let's go over the powers real fast. Yes. Uh, the first power is warp flare. Each enemy within nine inches of the, of the vortex beast immediately suffers a mortal wound. Boom. Done. Uh, second power, chaotic infusion. You pick a zinch unit, uh, zinch keyword unit, uh, from your army within nine inches of a mutilous vortex beast. Add one to that unit's strength characteristic until the end of turn. Pretty which great. Could be pretty useful, especially with those old zangors. Right. Uh, temporal flux. Pick a zinch unit from your army within nine inches of the mutilous beast. You reroll failed charge rolls for that unit. The unit is our if they're already within one of an enemy unit in the fight phase they can reroll uh, they act in the fight phase as if they had charged so you, you can make him hit first there's also ephemeral touch 
Uh, basically, you get you pick one of your units, one of your Zinch units within nine inches of the Mutalith Vortex Beast, and they get uh, one extra AP on their their melee weapons this turn. There's also Maelstrom of Madness. Mm -hmm. uh, pick an enemy within nine inches, reduce its leadership characteristic by one until the end of the turn. This is cum cumulative with other uses of this power to a maximum of minus three. So that's one of the rare times where a power actually stacks yeah. with a like name power. Which, which I kind of like. Pretty cool. And then uh, finally, you have the Beam of Unreality, where you roll three d6. On each roll of four up, you uh, you deal a mortal wound to the closest enemy unit within 18 inches of this guy. It has to be also visible to the beast. Yes. So you just shoot laser beams on a four up, they suffer a mortal wound. Um, it also has a couple more abilities still. Keep going here. Yep. Uh, unstable energies. If the model has suffered seven or fewer wounds remaining at the start of your shooting phase, the ranges of its mutilated vortex powers are doubled. But... If you roll a 1, it uh, takes a mortal wound when trying to use a Vortex power. It also has Warp Implosion. This model is reduced to 0 wounds. Uh, roll a d6. If you roll a 6, it blows up. <laughs> yep. Uh, it will actually it, implodes. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah. implodes, but it implodes with a 6-inch radius, and everyone does takes a d6 mortal wound. So it's one of those explosions that It's sad. an explosion implosion. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we're going to skip through the last couple ones yeah, here. That, cause cause chaos Predators, predators Chaos Vindicators, Vindicator, Land Raiders, Land Raiders Defiler. Defiler. Forge Fiends and Mauler Fiends are also in the book. Yep. Uh, chaos Rhino is a transport option, which uh, you're going to want to take Rhinos with yeah. your Thousand Suns, which we'll cover when we talk about stratagems. Uh, uh, the Heldrake's also in this book as a, fa as a flyer option. But then last but not least, we have everyone's favorite, Mangus the Red. Mangus the Red. We know it's Mangus. We're just... It's Mangus. 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 <laughs> Mangus, Mangus the, the Red. Red. Mangus the Mangus. Red. Uh, yeah, he has changed uh, very subtly. Uh, yeah. He has actually gone up in points in power level mm -hmm. uh, compared to the index version. He's a 23 power level and... Uh, 445 point value. Yep. Uh, so he's up 40 points-ish, I think. 30? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Magnus. Uh, <laughs> he's still awesome. Uh, movement... Uh, he's got a variable movement still, just like before. Uh, 16, 14, 12 inches mm -hmm. as he drops down uh, on the chart. Seven attacks at the top, six attacks in the middle tier, and five attacks at the low tier. Psychic phase bonus is a plus two to start, plus one in the middle tier, and zero uh, as he takes wounds. He degrades, obviously. He has weapon and ballistic skill of two, strength of eight, seven toughness, 18, 18 wounds. wounds. Whew. Uh, uh, attacks are variable, like we mentioned. Leadership 10, three up armor save. Uh, he's a Primarch, just yeah, like Yeah, he's, he's a Primarch. Uh, yeah. he, he has the Blade of Mangus, which lets him hit at strength 16. Uh, he's AP minus 4 and does 3 damage. If you kill a character with it, you get a spawn. Make a spawn. Uh, and it spawns within 6 inches and more than 1 inch away from any model. It's this, it's, 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 it's the almost same. the same. from. It's almost the exact same from uh, the Index. Yeah. Uh, abilities wise, he has <clears throat> Death of the False Emperor. Mm -hmm. uh, he has Crown of the Crimson King, King again. This but has it's different. changed a little bit. Yeah, because yeah. it used to be that he, he. So he still gets the plus four and vulnerable save. Yes, that's the um, same. But now, in addition to that, uh, whenever you take a mortal wound from a Perils of the Warp, you get a save on a two up against that, and yeah. you ignore the wound. So that's kind of nice. Uh, he is kind of a master psyker. So. He is, so, uh, you know, yeah. he's, he's good at not blowing his own face off with. Psychic powers. Uh, yep. uh, he has Gaze of Magnus as well, which uh, is Magus. Mag it's pretty much the same from before. Uh, whenever you use a smite power, uh, you do D6 mortal wounds instead of D3. If you roll an 11 or more, uh, actually it no, says... Well, so basically, this is what's weird. It's, well, they yeah. changed, and I figured out why they, they phrased it the way they did. So basically... But you get 2D6 instead of a D6. But if you roll, if the result of the test is more than 11, what right. happens? Right, so, so that's when you get a 2d6, right? Yeah. So, but the, the reason they changed it is like his smite threshold is still the same for every other psyker. Yes. Um, it's just that, so smite is normally like d3 wounds on a uh, manifest 5 to 10, right? Or yeah, on yeah. A, but on a 10 up, it's a 10 D6. or more, you get 2d6. So uh, they're taking into account his psychic phase bonus. So you still have to roll a 10 on, on the, the die. die. But if you roll a 10 on the die, then you'll beat the 11 because that's that's the threshold, right? Well, it's, uh, it's and then it's, you do 2d6. Yeah, it's because it it's is, like it that, says, but it's, it's it, it specifically, specifically says the test is more than 11. Yeah. So 
you actually have to roll. You have to get a ten on the die. on a when you're on a two plus. You if, have to get yeah. an eleven. Yep. Because you have to beat an. It's got to be more than eleven. Yep. Or you take perils. Um, yeah. Well, you're gonna take perils anyway. Yeah. Because it's eleven. Or it's a whatever. Yeah. But it, he doesn't care because he gets <laughs> to have a two up save against yeah. the wounds. So. Um, but basically, they, they they did kind of like tweak the the effectiveness at, at yeah. how often he'll be throwing mortal wounds around. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's all it means. It's yeah. all it's all. It's, uh, on top of that, he has uh, Primark of the Thousand Suns, which allows you to get a reroll bubble for, from him. Uh, rerolls a one, uh, and any dice rolls a one that are made as part of a psychic test for friendly Thousand Suns unit within, within nine inches. Again, oh. that used to be uh, the reroll ones on invuln tests. <laughs> uh, <laughs> failed invuln, and those <laughs> are all gone. <laughs> all of those have been removed. Take so. that, Mangus. Yeah, uh, unearthly power. Whenever Magnus Red attempts to manifest or deny psychic power, add the bonus shown. So again, he has a two up to start or plus one or a zero uh he can do three powers a turn mm -hmm. or he can deny three power powers a turn and he has access to every uh zinch discipline that there is right he's now he's got which is... smite he's got this uh discipline of change dark hereticus and the discipline of zinch so he's got three powers he's got a total of 19 powers to choose from which is, is... ridiculous Whew. uh he's got uh chaos zinch Heretic, Astartes, Thousand Sons is keyword, faction keywords. He also key has character, monster, demon, Primark, flies, Psyker, Mangus the Red. <laughs> Mangus the Red. Uh, That's what yes. I said. So that is all of the unit entries uh, for the Thousand Sons. Yep. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll be back next time where we cover uh, the, the other... Relics, warlord yeah. traits, stratagems, and probably tactical objectives. Yeah, we'll go through some of those too. Uh... <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for sticking around, though. I'm JR. I'm Adam here. We're both from Bulls. Thanks for watching. Oh.